I'm Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. If your relationship is in trouble, I'm the dude to call. Has your soulmate become your cellmate? Does black love still exist? What are your bedroom turnoffs? Fantasies and fetishes. Financial infidelity. I'm dating a fat person. Are they worth the wait? Trust me, this gonna be crazy. How about the heavy stuff? The child wasn't his, and he still had to pay child support. It's a very heated topic. How was that right? Mama's baby, daddy's maybe. I just have so many questions I want to ask you. I'm like the trail has been committed. Hit you with the bad yeah. pipes routine. How does he maintain his humpacity? He likes it when it pinches my neck. Why can't you open up, brother? I'm a karate man. Karate man rules on the inside. They don't show their weaknesses. Yeah. How do you write women so well? So William. Reason and accountability. The voice of reason. My mic is not on. Yes, it is. I can't hear shit. You sound beautiful. We hear you. My headphones is broken. Yeah. We- <laughs> oh. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of reason has returned to Hot Button Radio. <laughs> Dash Radio. You know how we do. Listen, a couple of things I needed to uh, announce. First off, I apologize for not doing monday's show i miss y'all i love y'all and i need y'all in my life okay but we didn't have phone lines you know the something was happening technical difficulties was happening with the phone lines and i said hey man i gotta cancel the show if i can't have the phones cracking that's what this whole situation is about up in this mug hearing from y'all Getting y'all opinion on things that matter. (laughs) So listen, phone lines are back, cracking. What is the number? 844-55-1 or is it another? Okay, what's the other number? Is it that number or another number? Oh, okay. That's a whole other number. I don't even remember my mom's number, man. You guys remember um, I put his ass on, uh, (laughs) on the Periscope. So that's the dude. Could you write the number down and give it to us before maybe the show starts? I mean, hey, you gave it to my producer. And then what was the producer doing? I don't know. Anyway, it's all good. Today's topic is going to be crazy. But before I announce today's topic, the week after, the week after, I mean, these girls are in here like. There is a bug in here, y'all. It's not really a bug. It's, it's a moth. It's, it's more like a bird. Okay. Those it's a are the moth. Things that get in it's, your hair and they moth. flicker around. You have a ponytail. Well, you know I'm trying to take I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a swing one time and it's a rat. Okay, Jesus. I was guys. just going to try to kill it. But. Okay. Anyway, let me just get back to it. Um, The number to dial for today's show is, and I want you guys, ladies, can you tweet this number out? Of course we can. This is the America. Number, the number to dial is 323 323- 230 Simple enough. All right. I want to hear from folk. As a matter of fact, Chris, would you like to text Veronica this number? Or are oh. you going to let her call the other number? 323-230-4445. Now, not now, n- not this coming week, because this coming week is Thanksgiving week. But the week after, can I tell y'all what we're about to do? We're about to do something amazing. We're about to end racism Ooh. on the voice of reason. We're going to do a three-part series on racism, Ooh. and we're going to bring the heaviest hitters in the game to come into the studio and participate. November 31st, Monday, it begins our quest to end racism on the voice of reason. You cannot miss it. The promos are going to go out. It's going to be bananas. Now, phone lines open. 323-230-4445 is the number to participate in. Now, today's topic. Should I do the topic or should I introduce the people who are not paying attention? I think I should introduce I'm you. trying to tweet the number. Tweet you know what? Number. You guys are slow. Talk about putting you under the bus. Yes. And running back and reversing. Ooh. Why are you under the bus? 
God damn. <laughs> Shouldn't be sleep under there. I done told my ACL <laughs> fucking with you under this bus. Don't mention ACLs. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I bruised my elbow real bad. There you go. There Jesus. you go. Right. Caught in a tire well. Anyway, <laughs> in the building, I'm going to go all the way from the far end back to the to the near end. We've got a very spiritual and honorary guest in studio. We love her Henri nature. Is this her music? Turn it up. <laughs> she got music now? Turn what it up. What song is this? Jesus and them. <laughs> it's called it Jesus up. and them? Jesus and them. By who? It's a new group. You never heard of them? Turn it up. Did you just make them up right now? I promise you it's Jesus and them. Jesus and them is the name of the group? Is the name of the group. <laughs> Turn it up. What is the <laughs> Oh, is this a gospel song? Yeah. Don't look at me. <laughs> don't look at me like that. It, with, without don't, further don't, ado. Don't mess with God. Listen, without further ado, Tyree Elaine in the building. What's that? <laughs> that's all you got for me? What you want me to say? You told me Are not we, to look at you. I'm just saying we got your wonderful music and that's all you're going to give us. I've never even heard of this song, but okay. But you will praise dance to it before it's over. I mean, I'm not going to do it in front of nobody, but... <laughs> That's not really nobody's business, but me and God. Okay. Jesus. Look who else is in the studio right now. She got her hair done. She all Beyonce-esque. All flowy. (laughs) (laughs) Comedian, actress extraordinaire. You know who it is. It is Arana Lopez. Hey, hey, folks. How y'all doing? <laughs> we in the building. I'm here, the comedian extraordinaire with the delicious dairy air, making haters pull out their hair. Chicago, Groceries. we up in here. Groceries in the back aisle over there. <laughs> Groceries. Oh, my God. <laughs> you said groceries. I was going with it. And let's get Whitney's music or at least sound effects together. You know she's in the building. Wild child. Fire. She like this too. Look at her. she moving and shit. Whitney Tabor, Team Tabor in the building. Hey, 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 hey! What's poppin'? Hey guys, what to do? What to do? What to do? Happy Wednesday! Happy Whitney Crush Wednesday! That is. What up, man? I'm excited. I missed y'all, man. We didn't get a Monday show. It's nothing though. We're back. We tried. Don't worry. I'm gonna tweet that number at Miss Tabor. I'm gonna tweet the right number so y'all get to the phone lines because it's gonna get hot in here today. I'm trying to tell you. Oh man, it's gonna be nuts. Listen, today's topic. Get to your phone lines right now. What is the number, ladies? The number is 323-230-4445. Hey, I like to hear all the ladies say it. You want us to say it in harmony? This is a choir. I'm just saying. (laughs) Or the Jones Girls (laughs) one. Shit. (laughs) Escape. Somebody got to be tiny. Anyway. Nope. uh, (laughs) I'm going to be candy. I want that 50 million. I ain't with none of them. I'm, um, I was in Destiny's Child. Not that. (laughs) Okay. So what's the number, Tyree? <laughs> okay, um, it's 323-230-4445. You will not that's how smack we have to on get, the air. I couldn't help it. It's, that's how I give out numbers after 323. 323. Oh, Jesus. See? Oh, I Jesus. Even, All I right. Not to. This is a failure. <laughs> anyway, um, last but not least, our girl is on the line. Veronica Conway, VC. Hello. Get up Hello. in here. Hello, beautiful people. Hey, Ronnie Khan. Hey. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday to you. And you guys should tell us what you think. Should this music be Veronica's music? Because she's always on the air, you know, dropping very heavy bombs. Or should this music be Veronica's music? Hilarious. <laughs> Wait, what's the other music? The you Olympic song. The the Oli- <laughs> oh, God. I, I love know. all of it. I like this song, but this kind of is like Little Engine Who Could. I'm, I'm, I'm I like already, the other one. I'm already on Team VC. She got her thing. Did somebody just? Oh, yeah. I'm already on oh. VC's first music. We got to keep it. We got to keep it how hey, we keep it. It's turned up in the studio right now, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. They're filming with Tyler, their creator, right now. Yeah. That's what's happening. And it's all turned up. People are knocking over tables. I mean, it's it's monkey business at a high level. But fuck it. This is what we do. 
we turn up. So today's topic, let's get in it. Let's get in it right now. You must name. Get to your phone lines. 323-230-4445. You must name the top three things you learned, lessons, mm. from your most significant ex. Ooh. Damn. Yikes. This is going to be good. Yikes. This is ugly. I, I can't wait to hear everybody else. Just to see no, I'm going to start with you. Don't do it. I'm starting with you, Damn, Connie. Y'all don't want these. Connie. Y'all don't want these. That's Connie right Inside there. jokes. Oh, okay. I'm, I know, I'm dead ass serious. The top three things you learned, lessons, right? And you got to tell the truth. That, that, listen, that's the only rule I have. Tell the truth. Top three lessons you learned from your most significant ex. And I don't want no lightweight stuff like, I learned that I was too nice. I learned it. You know how people do? I learned that I was a sweetheart. I learned that I was the bomb. You know? Right. I hate that. Yeah. I want like some real honest self assessment, some real honest, objective things you found out about you. Okay. I learned that I don't do well with cheaters. I don't want no blaming the other person. You want to let people do what they do, though. She want to blame. I, I get not. one. I will not. I'm blaming one on no, him. There's no blaming. So <laughs> for clarity's sake, do you want just all lessons that we learned about ourselves? Or did you want lessons in general that we learned about life? You can give life lessons, but really, because you know women have a problem with accountability. Uh, mm-hmm. All right, relax. Should we play the intro again? Not this woman. Okay. I actually learned some good life <laughs> lessons. I should thank him. And I'm send just, him a bottle of Moet right now. Like, I'm, he was right. I'm just saying. Here's some Burnett. Great, great oh, movie. Yeah. Great movie from, you know, uh, what's my man, Jack? As good as it gets. Oh. The lady. Hey, how is it that you're able to write about women? So, uh, start with a man. And then I take away reason and accountability. <laughs> so, you guys already know you're bullshitting. And I want truth seekers in here. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to start with Whitney Tabor. Whitney, wait a minute. <laughs> Jeff Schemmel just texted me. <laughs> what, 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 what do we got? What do we got here? <laughs> this this is what, just in. This is one of the things he learned. <laughs> this is Joe. Yeah. Ooh, let me hear it. I want to hear this. I learned that you can't cure a bitch who's an alcoholic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I learned the same thing, Jeff. Yo, that, me and Jeff learned the same thing. Yes. Hey. Stupid. So let right? him just let him keep turning up. I, guess. I learned your liver give out after drinking so much Grey Goose with your alcoholic spouse. Don't get too loose. Hey. No, I'm serious though. Can y'all be honest? Can you tell the truth? I kind of the like- three top most significant lessons you've learned from your most significant ex. 323-230-4445. That's 323-230-4445. Whitney. Get the monkey sounds ready. Don't run. Let's see. <laughs> That's the whole racism. show, by the way, racist, Zoe. Hey. Hey. Th- it's not racist. <laughs> all right. I'm- Relax <sighs> with the monkey sounds, all right? I'm wild, but I do what I want. There it Where's is. Where's that? Anyway. There we go. No, one thing, like, I kind of, like, was really, like, I had to reflect. I'm glad, I kind of was, like, I'm glad I got a couple days to think about this. One thing that I found was you, people really need to understand the value or lack thereof in the things that they attract to them. So, it's, like, basically, like, be careful what you are looking for. Do we have a gong? Gong it up. Do what you want to do. Because I'm saying, what did you learn? And I'm just saying, I'm learning that my patterns on picking men are maybe a little off. So now I'm doing them differently. Mm. That's what I just said. That's what you learned from who? Dating. I learned from myself. Do I need to say the rules again? <laughs> the rules are be honest and true. And I'm telling you what I learned. You can't say, tell me what you learned and then give me a... <laughs> Oh, no. but but don't don't tell me exactly what you learned. But I only want to That's hear. That's not what I'm saying, box. babe. This is what I'm saying, honey. I'm okay, saying, hun. a specific ex, one that mattered more than the others. Okay. What were the top three lessons you learned? 
from that situation? Because all relationships add to your body of knowledge on relating, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, there are some significant people in your movement through relationship that taught you some shit that none others did. They were more impactful on you than anybody else. What are the top three lessons you learned from your most significant ex? 323-230-4455. Okay. Second one would be, <laughs> look, second one would not to accept their, all of their baggage with all of my baggage. Oh. I'm not going to, I'm sorry, I don't have, I already got my own issues. So me trying to fix yours didn't work. Mm. So I'm not going to try to take on that because I am superwoman. But guess what? You got a lot going on. I got so you one of them on. nurturers. You be trying oh, yeah. to save. You oh, Captain yeah. Saver, bro. I be saving Captain. Yeah. Oh, Captain Saver, bro. I'm mm. all day. Let me lick your weaknesses. Oh, come here, little lame, lame ass. Come here. Yeah, that's Come here, thing. little lame ass. <laughs> I'll let me a lame little lamb. Little come in here. McLamey. Come yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There is McDreamy. She likes McLamey. No, and then wow. look, McLamey is Veronica. Worse. Wait, you got number three, right? I got number three. Go ahead. Number three was don't settle. I settled. I liked being in a relationship, so I just said, "Hey, Lamey, come here. You're good enough." Ah, oh, damn! Now I got to fix all this too. <laughs> Wait a minute. It, oh, hey, Lamey, come here. Come on, Lamey. You, I'll deal with this. This is easy. I don't. I'm tired of being by myself. Come on. So I'm done settling. That's why I've been single. So I'm cool off of settling. I learned my lesson and now I love it. I'm doing that. I think it's hot. There it is. Veronica Conway. Your three lessons. You talk, okay. Um, so I would say from your most significant one, from your most yeah. significant other. Yeah, well I will say that, you know, it's interesting because my ex husband is my most significant because he did he wreaked the most there was the most havoc wreaked in my life because of him financially logistically i would prefer to think that what about spiritually uh, and spiritually i would mm. say that my subsequent relationships were, were far more like loving and powerful but he was such a fucking nightmare that i chose up after that i was like you know what that was like a such a rock bottom so i would say that he taught me don't fall in love with potential wow do not fall in love with that potential. is a ooh, that's a great lesson don't because, fall in love with yeah. potential ooh. true <laughs> that's i don't mean that somebody has that somebody has had to that they have to be all that they're going to become. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that if somebody isn't demonstrating, like, with their patterns, with their actions, with their deeds, if they're not demonstrating, like, a certain aspirational nature, then they're not ever going to, and you're not going to make them, and you're not going to inspire them to, and you're not going to, if they're not already on their game, and, you know, then, they, then, then they're not going <laughs> to, just because you're on the scene. Right. So, wow. um, so I, you know, I need an aspirational man because I'm aspirational. I had somebody tell me yesterday, actually, a brother that I used to date. And he said, he said, a man, most men would be kind of intimidated with how you pace. In other words, because the way I pace in life in terms of the things that I try to go out and get accomplished in the world, like if he's not kind of in that, if he's not in that rhythm, it's, it's going to be a fucking nightmare. It really will. So I would say the other thing is watch and listen for patterns and not words. Wow. I like that. I pattern, like that. A pattern, a pattern is going to always tell on itself if you're paying attention. A pattern so is going to tell pattern. on itself if yes. you're paying attention. That was great. That was, yes. that was meaty. Yes. That was Denty Moore beef stew right there. Thank you very much for that contribution. You're so <laughs> welcome. Let me go on over. To the holy roller side of the game. <laughs> Thank you. Tyree Elaine, where's the motherfucking uh, tambourines when she talked? Speak on it, sweetheart. Your three lessons that you learned from your most significant ex. Um, number one. Um, pork is good. I do eat pork. Christ said that all things are made. It's plain. right. There we go. You know what? You get on my nerves. <laughs> 
Yes, oh. play her music. Let's go. Speak Too on the baby. Much. Okay, number one, don't give a man the power to change your emotions. Hold it up, Boko So, mm. all right. All right, Zo. What? You just finished, babe. Don't give a man the power to change your emotions. For example, if you're happy mm-hmm. in all other aspects of your life and a yes. young man do something to piss you off. Yes. Now, all of that goodness, yes. all of that good stuff in the world and yes. in your life Speak means up. nothing. Hallelujah. Um, the other thing I learned is to establish and maintain boundaries. What kind of boundaries? So if, you boundaries, know, boundaries related to what? Boundaries like if you don't kiss on the first date or something like that, or if you don't have sex on like date three, you know, just like certain boundaries. If you don't allow guys in your house after a certain time, just boundaries, you know? Like nigga, it's 730. You got to leave. So stay true to <laughs> you. <laughs> Seven. Seven? Okay. Yeah. I don't know what number that is. Okay. So <laughs> whatever your boundaries are, you know, if, if, you know, I don't kiss you or I don't have sex with you unless we're in a... A, a relationship that you initiated as a man, you know, I don't, it's, that's, that's where a lot of stuff gets complicated because you have sex with a dude and you don't know what y'all are. Mm-hmm. Now, all of a sudden, the man feels like he's, he owes you a relationship mm. because you, because he had sex with you. Wow. You know what I mean? So, you know, establish, maintain boundaries. If you want a boyfriend, then you should try to get a boyfriend, not a sex partner, and try to turn him into a boyfriend if that's ah. ultimately what you want. And the Oof. third thing is, um, kind of the most, the the, the biggest thing is, Hold you know, you ask a, you ask a guy, Hold it a book, <laughs> you ask, go ahead, Tyree. You act like I'm the one. I'm okay. translating this shit you, for the spirits. Would you shut? <laughs> <laughs> shut up. You ask a guy if he knows his purpose. Hold on a you know, if he if he work at the post office, you, is, is that your purpose, baby? You know, if he whatever it is that he does for a living, you just so happen to ask now, is that your purpose? Oh, no, this is or, interesting. Or is that just your job? Because I was a teacher for a long time. Mm-hmm. That was not my purpose. That's just what I did for a living. And sometimes like, you know, if you got in a relationship and your job coincides with another person's purpose, mm-hmm. But that's not your purpose. Then it gets confusing. You know, you prepare for what you're, where you're going, not where you necessarily. So wait a minute, Tyree. Are you? you, It seems like you're a little bit polar opposite of Veronica. Whereas Veronica said, "Don't date a a guy's potential." You're saying date a guy with purpose. Well, I'm not necessarily saying don't date a guy's potential. Uh, You definitely want to. I mean, because you're attracted to what they have right now, but they have got to have ambition. They forgot to have ambition for, you know, and goals. Like, you know, so where do you see yourself so in So date three ambition? Years? No, you don't date ambition. I mean, obviously you're attracted to whomever, you know, you got in front of you, but you want to ask where are you going? Because if you yourself have a three-year plan and it goes there, mm-hmm. then you kind of want to get a man who has a similar three-year plan that goes there. Not necessarily, well, this is it. Because if this is it in three years, you're going to be over there where, you know, we're on your vision board, whatever's on your vision board, you're going to be over there and your man is still going to be content with whatever it is that he's doing. That's so interesting you just want to, you know, of course you want to be attracted to a person's present, but you want to be very, very, because, because, because the future is coming. This is interesting. The, the future, future is coming. Is coming. That, that's it's, funny. It's, it's, you the future never comes. That's why it's the future. You, you know what I, I mean? The like the future is eventually going to become the present and you're going to have to deal with it. The present is always the present. Oh my gosh. Hold it a book shot. Now. She about to choke you with that other hat you got on. I am. I'm going to snatch it off. I'm going to snatch off your cold brown hat and throw it into the street. It's Onto okay. Kawanga. It's okay, baby. Now, uh, you, you've done as good as you can. That's fine. Uh, that's that's basically, I think you understand, um, you, you know, just despite your efforts to become extremely antagonistic. No, you did good, babe. It's fine. All right, I'm now, proud of what you. What are your thoughts? Because that was just. I'm saying I'm proud of what you've laid out here. Don't he look like he about to break into a game of three-card Monty or break dance? <laughs> like he do. He's about to pull the cards out of the side of that hat. Exactly. <laughs> and on to the next joke that works. Now, um, <laughs> Arana Lopez. I am present. <laughs> yes. Could you please uh, tell us what in the hell you learned from Dexter St. Cock? Oh, hilarious. <laughs> did I date Yikes. Dexter St. Cock? Yeah, you did. Oh, okay. What you talking about? I, d- I dated Dexter St. Slong. Listen, um, Ooh. I, le- 
learned quite a bit from my significant ex. Well, you're going to have to say this shit in 30 seconds. Nigga, I wasn't going to give you all of the lessons. Stay in your lane. Give me three. I'm going to give you three. The first lesson I learned is perception is reality. Okay? The way huh? perception is reality. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me stop this for a second. Stop it for a second. Callers, if you want to come call in <laughs> and just cuss motherfuckers out for the crazy shit they've been saying, it's fine. Okay, go ahead, Ron. You see how he prejudging? Huh. He don't even know the jewels I'm about to drop in this bitch. We about to see. Whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was in the habit, me, myself, and I was in the habit of doing things a certain way because I felt like as long as my intentions were good, that was all that mattered. And he was actually the person that showed me people could give a damn about what you intend. It's what they think it looks like. And I was, that was a very good life lesson he showed me. I can smoke a bag of that. See, and you hated on it and poo-pooed on it with your little pleather hat. Y'all but still can call you, in and cuss her out. It is actual leather. You, this nigga's hating I am drastically. Hating. This, I am, this, <laughs> this nigga is I'm hating because it's shy. Hating. <laughs> Jesus. Now listen. But continue. So perception is reality. You know, like, uh, I'm a very kind-hearted person, a very giving person. And, you know, sometimes I would do things just because that's the nice thing to do, you know, give people my seat, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, dude, don't do that. Like, you look like X, Y, and Z. So that's number one. Number two, it's okay to be selfish. You got to put your oxygen mask on first. That's what you learn. It's okay to be selfish. You got to put your oxygen mask on first. Mm. Can't be worried about other people. You can't be worried about this, that, and the third. Get your house in order first. And then you can worry about everybody else. Put your oxygen mask on first. Interesting. He taught me that. Another thing he taught me, the third and final thing, understanding a man is the best thing you could ever do. That's the best quality a woman can have for her man is understanding. Understanding specifically who he is, where he's going, what he wants, what makes him tick. Um, He used to get very agitated Not with just me, but just previous people he told me about. When they try to love him in a way that he doesn't want to receive love. For instance, they they give love by touch or gifts or whatever. What he wants from his woman, more importantly, is to know that she understands who I am, where I'm going, the battles I have to fight as a man, and she got me. And a lot of men want that. When When they get with a woman that they feel have those qualities, she's that much more attractive. Good shit. I like that. See? I can smoke a bag of that. Nah. This is what I learned. I learned, number one, you can't be everything to everybody. That's what I learned in the relationship. I learned uh, you don't have to explain your truth to your partner. If you got to explain your truth to your partner, they don't see you for who you really are because truth is self-evident. Understand it. Right? Love that. Then um, I also learned that I was a big, fat, unadulterated liar. Because in trying to be something for other people, I compromised, which wasn't in alignment with my truth, which made me a liar. And my my best friend, Mo D, he was like. What the fuck are you doing? He said, Zoe, you're an ant. No, he said, you're a god among insects. He said, why are you kowtowing and capitulating to some shit that's beneath you? What are you doing? I was like, I I love her. He was like, nigga, stop it. (laughs) (laughs) He was like, first off, she loves the idea of you. So really, she doesn't even really love you. She loves the concept you represent in Uh her mind. Come on now. Uh And he said, you're Uh capitulating to somebody who isn't even in love with the God in you. Nigga, get out of there. Mm. He was like, you dodged a bullet. Righteous. And, And he was like, you actually, you drained some of the God force in you by playing a role that isn't the truth. And, and, he, and then he was like, that's how you created this. You actually helped build the breakdown of the situation because you weren't the real you. Mm. So that's what I learned. I feel that. Don't explain your truth. If somebody, Why you do this? And who are you? And nigga, you don't know. You don't know. You don't understand. You're not in alignment with. I, I, I can't write a manual on what it is 
that makes me me. Mm. And even if I did, you still wouldn't understand the phone is ringing, pimp. You need to get off your phone. Who you texting? Your mama? This He's is like, some good shit. Like, <laughs> this dude act like he don't even know how this show get out. <laughs> He know these phone lines be cracking. He's sitting here texting like, yeah, yeah you going to have some uh, refried beans and some, and some tamales and shit. When I... You're racist as hell. You're part of the problem. This ain't racist. I ain't got no power to oppress this man. And scene. Thank you. Now, uh, <laughs> listen. We Zoe is against me. Everybody who loves me. Zoe got, against me. I love you. Little Scorpio. Shit. Little bottom heavy. I love you. It's a compliment. It's Look. a compliment. Thank you. So I close my long sweater. Yes. Yeah. I thought it was close. Anyway, we've got callers. The phone lines are cracking. The girls did a horrible job framing up today's topic because that's what your little disclosure was. It was a frame up for the topic. He's a hater. For the callers. I was going to say the one thing, the main thing that I think I forgot to mention about what I learned was I ignored my intuition. Man. I knew I wasn't yeah. supposed to marry him. I literally knew this is not the one. And I did it because I was like, man, it's convenient. Uh, it's easy. It's already gone. It's already in the works. Might as well just do it. I like it. Nike. I so love it. That, so, I mean, yeah. So listen, the phone lines are fully stacked. I'm going to say it again. Three things you learned from your partner, your most significant ex. Three things you learn from your most significant ex. And listen, you don't have as long as these long-winded sails that are in here, these fucking clipper ships. <laughs> you don't have as long as they did to explain. So I need you to rattle them off quick. The three things you learned, be concise, be on point, and blow us away. I'm going to Virginia. Line two. Maureen. Speak on it, sister. Hi, King Zo. How are you? Ah, King Zo. I am well. <laughs> <laughs> Bring her to my quarters at once. Bathe her and prepare her for my loin. Speak on <laughs> it, love. Beautiful queen. <laughs> um, King Zo, I uh, have time I spoke to you in June. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to say the first thing that I learned, um, referring to chapter eight in your book, the regret bucket list. Oh, the regret bucket know, list. Wow. Yeah. I didn't realize that I had a regret bucket list until I started like reading your book. Like I regret it. And, I, and my most significant ex is my children's father. I didn't realize that like I wanted to have kids, but I really didn't want to have kids. And I wanted to have a family, but I really didn't want to put in the work. Wow. Right. Um, and I was playing the victim. Even though, like I said, he had his ways, he was the mirror of me. And your book totally, King Zo, when I say that your book and you and uh, Miss Conway totally like ripped me apart and gutted me out, like my children's father and I are back together now. And oh. he still, like I said, he's, he, like, he sees the change in me. And that's what I had to realize. I had to do the change, not to be with him because I was, I really loved him only, but the change in me so I could just be a better person, a better mom, because all that shit affected everything that I did. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So that's like the main thing, um, the main thing that I learned, and that's like two in one. And then I also learned that it's okay sometimes to just be quiet. And mm. stay self, stay conscious and self aware. Like you know, Miss Conway are always mm. saying, stay mm. accountable, stay accountable. Mm. And mm. the book taught me that. Like this book was almost like reading the Bible again. Like when I used to go to church, I swear to God. Like, wait, wait, hold on, Maureen, hold on, because yeah. somebody is clowning right now. I need to get her an express copy of the book because she's up in here. She's like, what? That is blasphemous. That is fucking sacrilege to say Zoe's book is like the Bible. And you know who said it. it. You know who said it. Miss Tyree Elaine, continue your thought. Yeah, it's like the Bible for for black people. Because like you said before, and like I said, the last time I spoke to y'all was in June, black people's relationships are screwed. Up. And once we get that right, everything else will fall into place. You know what I'm saying? 
and I, I just, it's, we're together now, and, you know, things are not always great, but now I know how to talk to him properly. I know how to have a set of respect, not just for myself, for him as a man, for my children. You, you know, like, I'm a better mom. Like, I'm, 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 I'm really, I, I'm shedded, and I'm continuing to grow. I'm no longer stagnant. I'm even helping my mom, and, you know, the woman in my family see a change in me, you know, as a black woman. And I, 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 all I can say is that those are the things that I learned. Stay conscious, stay loving, stay aware, and call out my own BS before it has to be called out on me. Because wow. people know when they're full of shit. Wow. They might not admit it. You know, that's why I'm saying, like, you know, I, I love listening to Arana. You know, I miss Ashanti, but I love listening to her, and I love Whitney. Uh, but Arana and that other young lady, they sound a little, little bit more like victims tonight. They mm. sound like they're pulling out what, what they've done, you know? That's just my opinion, and I love you, ladies. That's just my opinion. Maureen, I love you back. They, hey, this is beautiful, I know, baby. I, no, I love you back. Hey, King Zoe, I know you sitting there like, this is some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I know you want to change up the lineup, but y'all got to speak truth with Zoe, because he's all he's fire. Mm. I love it. Somebody, somebody. I love Mikey. Hey, hey listen, I spoke I, my truth of what my most significant ex really taught me, and those lessons have taught me to do things better than what I did. So, I mean, I still, that's Thanks. what I learned. Thanks, Maureen. Excellent. Maureen, you were dope. dope. Way, to, get on down, way to kick it off. Thanks, Maureen. Virginia. I love you, ladies. Yeah, wow. we love you back. Girl, love get it. You, Maureen. Yo, man, like I said, she brought the, the first city into the building, which was Virginia. I mean, if you want to bring your city into the building, the number to dial is 323-230-4445. Get on the phone lines right now. These sisters in here are pretty. Herbed, but I love it. <laughs> hey, I love it. Let's get to line four. Ronan, Indianapolis, Naptown in the building. What's good, family? Hey, hey, Ronan. What it is? Maintaining, maintaining. Uh, definitely uh, thankful for this topic. And um, it's good to see you guys on here today. Um, the first lesson I learned is the grass is greener on the other side because it's a fresher pile of shit to step in. <laughs> oh, so we just wasn't going to keep it all the way positive. I, like, <laughs> oh, I love it. I, the reason I say that because um, when it comes to uh, organic love and loyalty is not only extremely rare, but it's definitely earned. And when you take advantage of someone who is giving all of themselves uh, it could hurt or even destroy them. So mm. I had to be, you had to be more accountable about that. And uh, the second lesson I learned is you can't help them address their demons without being willing to slay your own. Mm. And uh, there are many things that I learned from my father, you know, you know, not even being a rolling stone. He was a bouncing boulder around town, but um I had a woman that, that just sat there. She was true to the game, like true to me. Just did all kinds of things, and I wasn't used to it. And it's not even an excuse, but the thing is, like, when you see something like that and you aspire to have it, you got to not only prepare yourself for it, but when you get it, hold on to dear life until, mm. you know, the wheels fall off. And the last thing I learned is um, once that love is lost, remember to drop your cross. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Once the love is lost, remember to drop your cross. I like Say that. more. Yeah. Say more, brother. Uh, okay, once uh, I, I did the dirtiest deed was cheated on her with her best friend. Ooh. Um, I actually carried that burden for years. Like, I even, it took me like over, I want to say close to 10, close to 15 years to even get over that and I had to get to the point where you know look that was then I made a bad decision I cannot drag that into every new relationship because most times we're guilty of putting uh, an old face on a new body ooh there it is wow and, and mm. when I had to take some time to like really take accountability first thing I'd done I was able to feel that weight being lifted because like you can tell when you're in a new relationship, you start dragging. Everything feels heavier, like you have more pressure on you to be something that either you're not ready to be or something that you're completely not. So, wow. Hey. That's what I learned. 
this is a real show today. Like, mm-hmm. if you really want to get down with the real in your life, you could do it today. All you got to do is call me at 323-230-4445, The Voice of Reason. I got to take a quick break. That was Ronan from Naptown. He brought Naptown in the building. If you want to bring your city into the building, you know what you got to do. You just got to get to your phone lines and get active. And don't be afraid to disclose. We're talking about it today. The top three lessons you learned from your most significant ex. On the Voice of Reason, Hot Button Radio, Dash Radio. We'll be back in 2.2. Get at me. See you in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, the Voice of Reason is back in the building. Uh, Listen, yes. if, if you're just tuning in, today's topic is a very introspective one. Don't be afraid to share. Don't be afraid to disclose. Right? I want to know, what are the three most significant lessons you learned from your most significant ex. Not, no, uh, you know, I hate, you know, you know, platitudes. I learned that everything is going to be okay. <laughs> or I learned that everything is everything. <laughs> no. It's cool to just stay black and dad. <laughs> right. I want to know what you really learned from your most significant ex. Now, you can learn from any ex. You can get something from everybody. You tend to get something from everybody regardless, right? Especially if you're open and you're present and you're locked into wanting to know and learn. That why am I here? Why did, why did I attract this person? Why am I in relationship with this person? If you want to learn, you will learn. So my question is, what about that special person? Maybe there's some unresolved stuff there that led to a revelation of what you needed to pay attention to. I mean, Ooh. this, jeez, yeah. you got a story there? I got, I, got a, I got a little story there. My, it wasn't my ex-husband. It was the one before him. My college boyfriend did me dirty, but I took him back. And all of a sudden, I just had the strength to actually be okay with being by myself. And I left and it wasn't because he cheated Mm. or did anything wrong it was literally like I woke up one day and I was strong enough to you know what I don't like the way that he did that and it was a while ago and we are over it but I'm still not okay with it so I'm okay with being sad and lonely so I'm gonna leave and work on myself by myself he had a relationship and a dote in that thing what'd you say he said one day you woke up and you were strong enough he was like he put it in and he was like you know what thanks no 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 I mean no it was literally just like me woke up like you know what I'm cool and then it turned it was so crazy because the table it was weird to look at him on his knees begging me not to leave him crying and all of this and I'm like still like I'm sorry I love you and I want to make you stop crying and help you and say yeah let's still be together but I can't I want to make you stop crying I want to help you stop crying <laughs> you know how you do that what you got to tell him is the same God that takes care of me takes care of you You'll be fine. That's a good one. Yeah. I, I, let me I'm, tell you something. See, I'm not that. Listen, when I'm a man is... A Virgo needs to hear that. You hear me? But when a man is in the middle of throwing a tantrum, he don't want to hear that. It like, don't matter. Literally, six like, foot what? three football player on his knees crying. Like, and I'm like... Whitney, nope. you must have that five. <laughs> Listen, I like the big dudes too, Whitney. <laughs> like a tree, like a Christmas tree. I climbed that thing. You feel me? I should have known. Like, uh-uh. Wait, Veronica had something. For BC, <laughs> BC what do you yeah. got? Yeah, I, I, I would also say that, like, how somebody paces spiritually is paramount. In other words, um, I found that I, like, my, my ex-husband was a deep Christian, although he didn't tell me that until after we were married. Ooh. He didn't tell me he was so a what's the problem with that? after we were married. Because it's a lie. It was a lie. A lot of things you told me once you were married, which was just felt like entrapment. But the thing is, is that spiritually we could not pace together. And so I think that's such a huge thing. Mm. So I've even, even subsequent men that I've been with, once I got sort of activated by the shaman and began to generate a ton of phenomena around me, then men would come into my space and they would say that they, they loved the garden, but they mm. hated the gardener. Ooh. 
Ooh, listen. Ooh. They want to emotionally Ooh. cheat with you, Veronica. Ooh. They want everything you got to offer, your gifts, your fruits, but they don't want you. Put the stank no. where it ain't. I've been there. Uh, the gardener. They didn't want the gardener. And so I had to, so finding someone that can take with you spiritually, and I've had to tell, I've had to put people on notice. Listen, you love this space. It's beautiful. And we're sharing love, like real, like unadulterated love. And this love always, because of the way I take spiritually, it's always growing. Mm. So if you don't do the practice, the work, the sacrifice, the, you know, whatever it takes, the deconstruction, I would say, of your ego to pace with me, then at some point we will look at each other and I'll be speaking Swahili to you. Wow. Because you won't understand the vibration. Mm. You won't understand the vibration. And so I think that's an important thing is not only can they spiritually paced, but are they willing to? And a lot of Negroes say they are because they love the garden, but they're not willing to be the gardener because that's work. Mm, that's good shit. You I know appreciate what? it. Veronica, you said something huge. You said you had to put them on notice. That's actually a very big lesson that I learned that I'm happy I learned. Sometimes you gotta just tell people what it is, not cut no corners, not nothing. You just gotta get it out because sometimes we tend to hold things in thinking that we're being, you know, proper or that's an act of care when really it's we're really polite, damaging right. you. Yeah, being polite. It's really damaging you because you holding it in and you the one with the problem. It's better to just get it out, rebuke it, bam. Listen, this is how I feel. T- let me tell it to you straight. Let me put you on notice. This is what it is. So you don't even have to hold that baggage no more. You be mad with people longer than you supposed to be because you the one carrying it and they cool. But see, this is why I always say the way forgiveness is set up now. Mm-hmm. People heal in geological time, whereas technology doubles and triples every 18 months. That's true. People have wounds that don't heal for generations. Mm -hmm. Except around me. Except around me. Oh shit, heal it up then. I be healing in an hour in like 20 minutes. I got it. Oh, my God. So, listen, we got callers. The phone. Look, uh, somebody take a picture of the phone lines. I, I, I just, I'm very proud of my work. <laughs> I got you, you know, the work we do here is quite uh, spectacular. And this dude got the nerve to be on his goddamn cell phone, knowing <laughs> these phone lines be cracking. Damn. Let's go to line four, Dallas. Aaron, it's your time to chime, man. Get at us, voice of reason. Hey, what's going on, y'all? What up, brother? Hey. Speak on it, man. Man, chilling, man. Chilling, chilling, man. You uh. Well, I got three right here, man. Um, the last chick I was with. So the first one is like, you know, you always say, you know, when you meet someone for the first time and, you know, you act a certain way, or you talk a certain way. And then after a while, you find out who the real person is. So I learned is what I've learned is just to be who I am from the beginning. So there's no surprises when I act a certain way or if I who I am. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't like mm-hmm. being who I'm not mm. because with my mm. with my ex I, I learned that you know I would be a certain way with her around my friends mm-hmm. mm. and, my, and my boy and my friends would be like well, damn dude why are you acting like that I'm like well, I don't know because because I love you know, her and, exactly that's mm. exactly that shit mm. and, <laughs> that's exactly that, that shit, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love you Aaron that shit <laughs> yep that's right and the second that's one brilliant. the second one is what um what Veronica said about being a Christian, that was the main thing because she was a holy roller. And I've talked about this and I've, I've posted on Twitter a few times because I had shows about this. The girl I was with, she was a holy roller. She loved church. And I realized that, like you say, though, I used to go to church because that's what she wanted to do. I went to Bible study. I tithed. I did all this stuff because that's what she wanted. And I felt like that is what I had to do to be with her. Right, but see, and you learn. can't... Well, let me just say this. You can't blame the church or the belief system. You got to blame no. you for not being no, true exactly. to you. Right. Exactly. And I blame myself because when I, I realized that I'm not into church like that. And I'll tell people up front, like, don't get me wrong, church is cool if that's what you like, but don't be expecting me to go to church with you every Sunday and tithing with you and asking what did God say to me and all this. I'm not, I don't do all that. I have a 
my own, you know, spiritual connection with God on my own. Right, right. Yeah. And let me see. The last one is just, you know, seeing the signs early. I had a bad habit of seeing the signs so late. Then by the end of the relationship, it's like, Mm, you know, I knew I shouldn't have done this. Blah, blah, blah. Wow. Let me ask so, the ladies this. Hold on one second, Aaron. You just said something that was very powerful. That's powerful, yeah. Seeing the signs. I notice women see shit way before dudes see things. Mm-hmm. Right? Dudes be missing a lot. And, yeah. And, and, and what I found was, because in some of my relationships, like, a girl would tell me straight up, like, dude, you miss a lot. Like, I'm, I'm with you a lot. And I see what you miss. You know, and Aaron talking about missing certain things, it just sparks something to me. Have you ever been with somebody, Tyree, where you were with him, but you saw like how oblivious he is? Because I think men tend to be oblivious. And I and I don't know what it is. And I always, whenever it's brought up to me, like, Zoe, you missed this, you missed that, I'd be like, damn, what the fuck is wrong with my eyes? I need to, do you, can y'all teach this shit? Is there, do you understand? Tyree, have you ever been with somebody like that? Yeah, I was with a guy and he, uh, he thought he was just being nice. He thought the girl was just, or the other person or the girl, whatever, was just being nice when in reality, this other person was being flirtatious. Like, it was just straight mm. up. And I'm, so, I'm like, you know, I don't think it's wise to do that because, you know, you might feel obligated to do certain things that you don't want to do mm. out of being nice, nice. Mm. And, um, you know, it, 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 <laughs> Aaron it just, is like, yeah. <laughs> it was just me tripping, you tripping. It's not that deep. And then, you know, when it became, a, oh, I thought we was friends. I thought we was friends. You, swear, you know, you supposed to hold me down. It's like, oh, no, I was just being nice. I'm like, I told you. Yeah. I didn't want to say I told you so, but I kind of did. Y'all be seeing, like, the intentions of women. Like, women see the intentions of women way clearer. I mean, the same mm-hmm. way a guy will see the intentions of another guy. You know what I mean? It'll be, you know, some ego trip, and it's like, oh, is that what that is? I thought the nigga was just being an asshole. <laughs> yeah, this, we call them satellites on the show. Yeah. You guys see satellites three years ahead of time. <laughs> like, <laughs> baby, he's just my homeboy. No, he love you, girl. Get him out of here. Like, Wow. Yeah, man. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> hey, just- Aaron. Oh, get on you now. took you took off from the free throw line. You brought Big D into the building, yeah. man. Oh, hey, great. thanks for the D. Wow. Okay. <laughs> hey, 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 hold on now. Hey. Watch it first. I said deep a voice, guys. Get you out of the gutter, man. You might want to slip into her <laughs> inbox. <laughs> don't don't slide yeah. in my DMs. Look. Oh, no, <laughs> What's happening, Pim? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I've been cool. All right, good looking, Pim. <laughs> Hey, man, I like it when we turn up up in here, man. Spiritual gangsters up in here. We have a special guest on the line right now. Ah, yes. This shit done turned the corner and got real. Ooh, real, real. Somebody's ex is on the line. Ah, yes. I I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm feeling a little nervous right now. I'm getting scared. Maybe. I wish mine would come on. Ooh, I wish a nigga would come on. Challenge. <laughs> that was VC basically saying, "I wish." More. Maybe, maybe I should let the ex this person belonged to. Yeah, belong to. that's what I said. Maybe ease the comfort zone. Maybe, maybe yeah, that. maybe she should introduce him. All right, Tyree Elaine, introduce your ex, please. Deshaun. <laughs> Not like you at home. <laughs> this is the, Deshaun. Mike, make sure you stop by uh, Chin Chins and pick up. Uh, just, <laughs> I'm saying, introduce the man, please. Line three. How long have y'all dated? Deshaun, oh, let, let him get on. Uh, <laughs> you just told me nothing. Yeah, like I don't know if he there. He don't like to wait for long. Okay, of time. hey Deshaun, line three from Los Angeles. Are you on the line? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Hi. how you doing, boo? And. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't be calling her ex boo. This shit I is crossing lines. She is more than welcome to call him boo. It's fine. What's up, Deshaun? Speak to us, man. Hey, what are Deshaun. The, if you've been listening to the show, man, we talking about the top three things you learned from your most significant ex. And we want to know what you learned from Tyree. Top three things. <clears throat> <laughs> Yeah, Deshaun. Okay. Turn like up, it. man. Don't don't put no filter on it. Pimp. No, top three at uh 
all have to deal with myself. Uh, one, when you know, how do you say it? When you, if you want somebody, just go after it. Don't let nothing interfere with that pursuit. Uh, two. You might as well apologize while you're talking to. No, I'm just, <laughs> go ahead, Pimp, just finish. Because <laughs> that sounded. <laughs> I let some things get in the way and, you know. <laughs> Okay. You know, the shit slipped away from me, got out of control, <laughs> whatnot. <laughs> Go ahead, Deshaun, finish, Pim. <laughs> We're listening, Deshaun. Two, what up, Arana? What it is. <laughs> there go her friend. Okay, look. <laughs> course, I, know, I know them. Like, that's why I said what's up. Uh, number two, uh, just always do what you say you're going to do. I'm sorry. Or, or, it, or either don't say it. That's a good lesson. It what it is, uh, and number yeah, three, it is. I would say, just always be honest, be honest as, as as possible. Like, don't try to sugarcoat to save the person's feelings. All right, yeah, that was real. Thank you. Right. That you kept it one on it. I feel like. Right. Tyree, you want to say thank you or something? This I'm, dude I'm just came and buried his soul. I don't know if he's talking about me. He, he we talking were talking about, about my significant ex. I don't know if that's my... Was, was you talking about me? That's the rules. Oh. That's what, oh, that's okay. what you guys just I told me to do. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know I if did. he was necessarily talking. Thank you. <laughs> he said, he said, just talk about something in Tyree. That's right. That's what I said, You Deshaun. had to get on down to Tyree. That's what I said, Deshaun. Don't you back down. Don't back he said, he said, he said, he said, uh, talk about your, with Tyree. He did. And he you, did. and you, and you saying what you said. You better I get on I apologize. Down. Sorry. I, I thought he said something else. But that was, thank you. <laughs> thank you for calling Give it up for Deshaun. All right, Deshaun. Give it up Deshaun. Yes. Right, Deshaun. Give it up Deshaun. yes. Thanks, thanks for calling thank Deshaun. Thank you for calling thanks Deshaun. For, Wait, you thank you for more. calling Deshaun. Los Angeles into the building. <laughs> you better get on down. Okay, we got to rebuke, uh, <laughs> Tyree, because Tyree, and like, thank you. Yeah, so, yeah you called. And Y'all shit. can't act like that one in the time. This is terrible. Damn it. <laughs> Go ahead, VC. What you got to say? Yeah. Get on, VC. Uh, so I think there's a thing about awareness. So uh, I think there's such a, and I think I got spoken to earlier, and I forget who said it, and I apologize for that, but... So the thing about awareness, like, is someone aware of their environment? Are they aware of their partner? Are they aware of, like, and so it's a, like, so, like, Whitney, we talked about it on a couple of shows back where Whitney was saying, you know, if a man doesn't, if you got to nag him to pick up the house, that means he doesn't have a high level of awareness about his environment. Or he's mm-hmm. pretending not to know something. Mm. So it's like, if you are dealing with people that are pretending not to know, then they're actually dangerous to you. Hmm. Because if they can pretend not to know about the most important thing called a love connection, then they're pretending not to know everywhere else. And I think at some point we have to say, hey, do you know or don't you? And if you don't, then why would I let, like, I would never let an unaware man enter my body again mm. because he's going to fill me with his confusion and his lack of awareness. I don't need that I, mm. because awareness is expensive. Ooh. It's it, expensive. It's expensive. Just like checking a bag at the airport. You, I'm not. Because, because, because you, have to, you have to confront reality to be aware. You have to be willing to face the shit that you don't feel like feeling, that you don't feel like thinking. Right, you got to be willing to like square off with that, and so if you haven't paid the price to have awareness, then you should not be in my body. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Lord have mercy, Jesus. <sighs> this is real. A lot of people are going through it. I learned how to be more aware. Like I was just totally oblivious. I was just like, let me just enjoy hanging with the girl because you know it's difficult to find somebody that you actually vibe with Mm -hmm. that you can actually put your guard down with that you could chill without worrying about the next moment or the next situation or whatever 
Or staying entertained. Or staying entertained. Because, you know, boredom is a factor in all of this. Yeah. When you find somebody that kind of aligns with you energetically, spiritually, mentally, psychologically, yeah. ideologically, yeah. what you tend to do is really become less aware. Right? Because you're just like in that moment and everything else don't really matter. But I think you're not, def- you're not defending anything. Right. You, you don't have anything. anything. Right. You right. don't you put your sword down, you put your shield down right. and you just chill. That's right. But I say those are the moments that you have to become the most present. Mm. Yes. Right. Yes. Those so those I, are not I the moment. Questions. Yes. So, that's when so you that's ask the question. Ask, that's when you ask the loving question. In other words, in the moment of sanity, Design for the potential insanity. Mm. Ask the ask the most important question in that moment of deep love. Yo. Do you guys you done. Under, exactly? Do, do you guys do you guys mm-hmm. agree no. that you should ask or have the most difficult conversations during good times? Yeah, I one hundred percent, one hundred percent. But I honestly, what Veronica just said about the crazy times. My divorce, when I found out the real reason why I was like, you know what, I got to initially get divorced, I asked him calmly, what, why did you marry me? Even though I was literally ready to physically harm this person, I was so enraged, I blacked out, I don't even remember. You be fighting people? No, I don't put hands on people because yeah, I believe, mm-hmm, ask, ask anybody. I, my daddy taught me, don't put hands on somebody if you don't want to put them back on you. So I don't be putting hands on nobody, but I really wanted to. Let me tell you, I punched a couple walls. Really? <laughs> don't let it fool you. You know, at when some, when people get so emotionally enraged, stuff happens. We see it. But I straight up calmly come and just asked him, "Why did you marry me?" Wow. Just like just like Veronica just said, like, I, pff, man. The best time to talk about the hard stuff is the good times because that's when they're more receptive to hearing it. Nobody wants to hear the real when you're already mad because you're defensive. So you're not going to receive it the same. That was also a lesson I learned from my most significant nuts. He ain't even listening. I know he not, but... <laughs> Make that nigga call. Text him. No. <laughs> I bet he listened to that text message. Call me, baby. <laughs> no. Well, you know what? He's not... My most significant ex, we ain't even on bad terms. We actually have matured to the point where we can at least, you know speak and joke around and crack jokes and all of that but it's so funny um i used to when i get mad i'm like a volcano and now i gotta spew out everything and let you know i gotta let you feel it i'm why i used to be because of how he taught me still like that you know what though (laughs) just because you cool mo d best friend don't mean you gotta steal his hat listen um one more one more time We get one more time, and I'm talking about the baby teeth. You can the talk permanent about the baby. baby teeth. You can talk about the baby teeth. You can, <laughs> talk about this pair, you can talk about this peg bundy hair I'm wearing, too. I don't care. No, the hair looks great. Well, you better get on down. It accentuates the ass. I apologize. But go ahead, finish. I apologize about your hat. <laughs> I can't. It's very, know. very nice <laughs> and shiny. So listen. <laughs> no, but I, I'm like a volcano when I get mad, and I used to blow up. And one time he told me, you know what? I would listen to this more if when you told me this when we were chilling. Right. When we're wow. chilling, right. that's when I'm, I want to hear stuff. Well, Don't make me feel like everything I, is all good. Can I add one thing? I think, honestly, people should talk more before they even become intimate or be, become boyfriend and girlfriend. People don't conversate enough to hey, really see if they vibe well Wendy. enough. Let me tell you something. Yes, Zoe. Talking, talking gets in the way of fucking. Okay. okay. And that's There's not going to be a lot of talking when there's some fucking to be doing. Okay. okay? Uh, uh, Veronica, you had a point to make? <laughs> a real, a real <laughs> joke. Please make a real joint. Yeah. I mean, I think I think that, and I've had to learn this the hard way. It's like pre-frame, I call it a pre-frame, pre-frame everything up front. Mm-hmm. In other words, in other words, what I've learned, and I'm, I'm in a twin flame situation right now, oh. which is the most loving experience okay, hold I've on. ever hold experienced. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's two lighters yeah. in the air, player. You, you got to explain to the people who may okay. not know what a twin flame is. Yeah, so a twin what? flame is when, when you are born out of the same material, the same soul, mm. and mm. you meet sort of that partner that like is automatically just sort of they just meet you in ways that you can't even explain. And the phenomena around us is pretty insane. So, you know, I, I'm not, and, and everything that, that that I've experienced in relationship terms has led me to this situation. Mm. 
and we're so we're so alike. It's 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 like we're we're like he's like the masculine version. Like if you met me in a if you met a man that was like me, it'd be him. Mm. So that's the situation I'm in right now, and so, um, but I, but, and that's fine, and it's beautiful, and I'm grateful, um, and so now I I look at things through the lens of that level of love because it's so it's so unconditional that um, I realize that like that's actually the real choice because that's actually the real choice is to, is to have unconditional love. But the thing is, is that if we step over things, if we ignore things, if we pass over things, if we, you know, this is an energy world. And every moment of compromise that we choose to engage in only boomerangs back to ourselves karmically. In other words, it's not, it's not that they are the problem. It's that every compromise that we make distorts our soul. That's I like that. So when we, nah, that's when interesting. We choose, that's big. That's a quote right choose, there. When we choose to do that, when we choose to compromise our soul out of our fear, by the way, mm-hmm. because this planet, because this planet is insane. When we choose to do that, then we settle for partners that are not in the right vibration with us, and we and we learn lessons. So, but it's never them. It's always us. It's so, always our compromise that actually leads to that space. So this is very interesting what you just said, and I think we should help frame this for listeners. If one of the lessons you learned from your most significant other was fear kept me in this relationship, call me right now. The number to dial is 323-230-4445. That's 323-230-4445. If compromise, Mm. and I'm not talking about Compromise, because because we have to define this. We have to qualify this. Compromise, compromise. is essential for a good relationship. It's essential. Day to day. Right? Yeah. But you have to know the difference between when you're compromising a concept, an idea, you know, uh, a, a function, or you're compromising yourself. See, I say compromise works right. up until the point where you start to sacri- com- compromise who you are. When you begin to lo- compromise your identity, compromise what you are, your truth, Correct. then that's not compromise anymore. That's that's actually self-sacrifice. That's when you throw yourself on the Barbie <laughs> and, and you're done. So if you're in a relationship where you've compromised yourself, call me. 323-230-4445. Dash radio, hot button. We got phone lines. The phone lines are fucking bleeding. It's crazy right now. I want to know what everybody thinks. I mean, this is tough. How, uh, what, if, do you, what if you were in a relationship and your significant other pointed out the fact that you're a control freak? What was what if what that was one of the lessons? I want the people who found out that they were controlling from their most significant ex. Tell us. I wouldn't be mad or you know what I'm saying thrown off if that was something that one of my significant others would tell me I've actually have learned to become one of the partners that know that people tell you things for a reason and so I've learned to be able to go well am I doing that explain to me or show me how I'm doing that Mm. because if they can't do that then Mm. you won't be able to correct it and if you are actually making the effort to do it and then they move to something else or they switch it, then maybe that wasn't the problem to begin with. Because there there are people who will tell you things just because they want to have a problem with something. Mm-hmm. And right. so, you know, you might be with one of those type of partners. But if it actually boiled down to me being controlling, I would just ask him to show me in the show me the ways in which I'm doing that so I can be mindful of it. And you know what's crazy? It's like untangling knots. Because I think who said perspective is real. That was me? That was you, uh-huh. right? And you shitted on it, but look, we back. I didn't <laughs> shit on it. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't shit on mm-hmm. nothing. Let me, let me, let me finish okay. this. I'm gonna come <laughs> to you, Veronica. All right. All right. Perception, right? It's like I said, it's like untangling knots. This yes. goes back to my point of you can't really teach or explain your truth to somebody else. Either they see it or they don't. 
Correct. Like some people have the U sight, and most people don't have the U sight. The people that don't have the U sight, those are the people you got to constantly maintain and manage and try to explain Correct. and get them to see. And it's almost a management gig when you're in a relationship with Correct. that kind of person. I call it spoon Correct. feeding them pieces of yourself. Right. And my, my great, my, she's my godmother. Mm-hmm. She's a Scorpio too. Let me tell you what she told me. She said, boy. If you got to teach them how to love you, Mm -mm. they don't love you. He said, if you got to instruct them on how to love you, that ain't the person for you. There it is. And that's, isn't that what most of us are doing? Are we not tutors to our partners trying to coach them on how to be with us? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not trying mm. to do that. I'm not a lazy person. I'm down to help teach somebody, but I'm I'm cool. One thing, you already told us you bring in McLeanies. Listen, I'm, and that's <laughs> something that I'm learning how to not do anymore because I, I, it's not a good look. One thing that I get annoyed with when females say is, well, he just don't know how to handle me. Well, what are you, a caged animal? Why does he need to handle yeah. you? You should be handling yourself because you are a woman and you control your own everything. So why should... Oh, it's his fault that he can't handle you? I am not a gorilla or any kind of form of zoo animal, so I'm good with handling myself. I just want you to love me, brother. I think inherently we all kind of bought into a social concept of we don't want to miss out on something or someone. And so everybody has had the history or past of entertaining people longer than we should have because they could be the one. And there instead of training ourselves to upfront see, well, do I have to teach them or, you know, do they get me or the, as Veronica said, pre-frame it. Um, but even in pre-framing, right, there's people that put on shows and know how to play the role. So you still have to, you know, try the person out and test drive them a little bit just to see what their behavior patterns are. You know, you never kind of get over that like initial thing. But if we started approaching more relationships as this is either going to be a yes or a no, and if it's a no, I'm still okay. We would actually right. find right. our partners faster, and you know, find more right. fulfilling relationships. Um, yeah, and oh, okay. I'm, I'm coming for you, Veronica. I got you, Pam. All right. Oh, thank you. The um, yeah. What 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 Arana was saying? Like, you know, sometimes we stick it out just because you know we really, really have a lot of. I feel like a lot of my friends at least do this. If we like somebody in our minds. Before we even really all the way in a relationship, we have fantasized the wedding, what our kids mm. gonna look like, how many we gonna have, what their names gonna be, what school, all of that other stuff, mm. and we're not even sure. Oh my god! If you know what I mean, today is today with them, you know. And that was a situation. Um, I had to just kind of address this. I guess it seemed like I was kind of kind of mean to my ex. I mean, we're cool. I'm the one who kind of said, you know, you're you're more than welcome to call in. We're cool. Um, but what happened happened. A lot of stuff happened. You can't undo what happened. You cannot undo what happened. He knows what he did. That's why he came up in here and said that. He couldn't possibly have come up here and said, well, I learned that I'm, you know, too nice or whatever. He wasn't going <laughs> to come up in here and say that. He wasn't going to say that shit. No. Mm-mm. You know, I wasn't sure what he was going to say, but I, I know he wasn't going to say nothing crazy else. I wouldn't have called him. But, you know, I guess it seemed like I was, you know, really like messed up because I just was like, oh, okay, I appreciate it. He has apologized to me before. And I told him, you know, you don't have to apologize anymore. What's done is done. I'm just glad that I don't, that I'm like not in it anymore. Right. I'm glad that I don't have to cry every night. You know, somebody was basically like, you know, you shitted on him. And I'm like, I want to say, well, maybe if somebody shitted on your feelings for six years plus, mm. you would probably be sitting here going, okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it might be misconstrued as well. Mm. You know, because I could very well sit up and sit, sit here and rehash everything that he did. He, you know, he he came and he said, you know, um, I learned to tell the truth. And I could have been a bitch and said, yeah, motherfucker, because remember that one time you said we was going to Red Lobster, and then you said that Red Lobster closed at six, but I googled them and they closed at nine. You lying ass motherfucker. No, I could have said all of that, but I didn't. I was what a great like, story. Okay. <laughs> that didn't happen. That was the first thing that came to mind. But I mean, like, I could have gone there, but we're good. We're it's a a beautiful feeling to be out of that. I don't think we were. <laughs> yes, the Cue incredible music. hope music. Cue Just music. for you. Keep going, Cue baby. Keep it going. I don't think we were supposed to be together. And if we are, don't make me I'd angry. be surprised. You, you wouldn't know like I mean? me when I'm angry. So, you know, I just, 
<laughs> I, ju- I just know that I learned that to uh, to be in a relationship, you got to be present and in the relationship or else you'll hold on to something, hoping that it'll be whatever you're fantasizing about and you will become extremely frustrated Yes. when, you know, this 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 apple tree is not turning into an orange tree because you've been fantasizing about it being an orange tree. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I want it to be this so bad, but if it's not, it's not. And, mm. you know, you got to appreciate apples for apples and oranges for oranges and figure out which of the two you want. And, you know, that's it. Tyree Banner is believed to be dead. Yeah. And she what? must let Banner? the world Hilarious. think that she is dead no, I before just she can find a way to control just the I, raging spirit that dwells with Whatever, her. just because I sat up here <laughs> that, and just listened to the man that I was, like, shitting on his feelings. Like, we've had private conversations. Shout out to Tropicana, this though. Was for All y'all. these apples and oranges and I, the fruits I, and I flavors. Love I love it. This Veronica Conway? I want some juice. Yes. VC, here oh you God. go. Wrap it. Yes. Okay. I'll say it succinctly as I can. Qualify your advice. And understand Ooh. the distinction between fantasy and reality. Mm-hmm. And one of the best ways that you can understand that for a woman, let me, let me just drop a little bit of science for you. A woman's fantasy will come out of her mind and her idea about a wedding, about a man, about whatever. Her reality will come out of her pussy. And so here's the thing about when you disconnect the pussy from the mind. Because if you look at, like, the ancient religions that actually preceded this current reality that we're living in, it's a chakra system, and it actually is a, it's a real system. It comes from your pussy to your heart to your, ma- to your mouth or your throat to your mind. And, your, and the crown chakra is a direct connection to God. So the mind is not to be used by a woman for her fantasy. It's to be used, in other words, if she's not answering to her pussy then she's useless. Mm-hmm. Then what do you mean answering to her pussy? Say that. Go deeper. Because it is not so much that she's answering to her lust. If she's not answering to the channel that runs through the energetic meridian channel. We talk, you talked about this on the other show the other day. Right. The, the meridians that run through her body. Yoni not, Gong. If she's, not, if she's not answering all the way up the channel, then she's in her mind. And she's making decisions that are faulty, that are based on a fantasy that she's been fed, which has nothing to do with reality. If she answers to her pussy, and it's aligned with her heart, and her solar plexus, and her mind, and her throat, and her crown, then, and her third eye, which is her intuition, then she will actually be of use to black men on the planet, mm-hmm. but not until... Wow. Then. Mm. Not until then. All right. And that's that music. That's what that means. Listen, the phone lines are cracking. They about to have a heart attack on them phone lines. God damn. <laughs> they ready. <laughs> Ow! I'm blown away by today's topic. So many people, man. I think it's very difficult for people to learn things in relationships. Because they're not looking at the feedback that's coming to them as if the feedback is them. Or pertains to them. Or pertains to them. They're just saying, hey, that shit is in the way of my objective. Can we talk about victimization, please? In a minute. Get on down. (laughs) Get on down. It's your show. (laughs) I would say staying with people too long is a type of relationship flunking. Mm Mm-hmm. You don't choose. Nobody goes in and says, "Yeah, you know, this is my way to stay with people too long. You stay with people too long because you're not getting what you're supposed to be getting from that situation. That's why you're in a holding pattern. You, you're supposed to get something. And guess what? It ain't always what you want. See, you go into a relationship with a concept of what you want and then wind up getting some shit you need. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't understand that because most people are not in tune with what they need spiritually, energetically, psychologically. They, they're, they're in tune with what we want socially. Socially, I want this. Ideologically, I want this. But how many of those ideas you've ever challenged? I was just talking to somebody today about it. So if you're going to study a belief system, I don't care what it is. If you're a Muslim, you better study Christianity. 
but most Muslims won't study Christianity because they have a preconceived notion about Christianity and vice versa. You better study whatever you believe in from all existing angles. If you're a Christian, you better study Christianity from devil worship perspective. Why not? Why wouldn't you? Because how would you be able to defend yourself against an enemy you know nothing about? Floyd Mayweather's ass? He going to pick at any fighter he fights. He going to know everything about him. Oh, that's their style. Let me break their style down. Let me study. Oh, here's a strategy for that. How you going to create a strategy for something you ain't ever even picked up a book and read? Right? I'm just saying. Anyway. We got callers. And they are biting at the chomp. They really are. Especially after what you just said. Yeah, you know, I like to frame up shit in certain ways. It's what I do. Let's go to line one, Los Angeles, Kenya. It's your time to chime, Kenya. Kenya. Hey, keep the music playing, Kenya. This is like her little time to come on. Hang up. Now, (laughs) Uh, (laughs) let's go to line three. D-Nice. What up, D-Nice? Hey, D. Yo, what up, studio? Man, we up in here turned up. You know what we got to do before you even open your mouth. Turn it up. Let's go. Get that shit in, man. Let's get it in. Turn it up. Come on. Let's go. Yep. From Chi-Town. Uh. <laughs> D-Nice, get up in here, man, and tell us what's cracking, man. Yeah, let me flex a little muscle up in here, though. I mean, I'm going to make it quick because I know there's other callers, but um, I learned that uh, in my past relationship, the most significant one at least is that um, operating out of a space of fear is totally not the way to go, and meaning that you can't be fearful of losing that person if you're true to yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to let them know that, you know, okay, well, although you're important to me, but you're not my end-all, be-all. And I had this uh, sick sort of habit that like every every time we had sex i would feed these negative emotions because she'd start talking about marriage and future plans and all this shit and i should tell her that you know what i'm not ready for marriage i'm not i don't ever want to get married but the truth is is that you know i didn't want that version of her because i knew that it was much more to her that she wasn't showing me which i was trying to evoke a certain type of emotion from her that she wasn't giving me back in return so I was trying to kind of ignite that in her, which really wasn't working. So, you know, I had that sick way of, you know, trying to deter the conversation into a, a, a position of me being fearful of what, you know, I might lose. Although, you know, it was up to me if I truly wanted it or not. Mm. And um, another thing is that if you are true, if, if, I, if I were true to myself, meaning that if I was tapping into my inner God on a daily basis, you know what, I, I think it's essential for couples to be spiritual, to pray together, to open up to a higher power, to allow that spirit to flow within your relationship. And that was something that I, I, I wish I could have, you know, allowed or, you know, tapped into a little bit more, simply because, you know, I, I'm I'm a, I'm aware of my inner God, you know, I'm, I'm not ashamed to allow it to, you know, permeate in and around me. And I think that if you show and share that with other people, they begin to gravitate towards you and, and really accept and appreciate the type of person you really are. And lastly, I think that the most important thing that sometimes we tend to do in relationships, at least speaking for myself, is to be dishonest and untruthful with the person that you really are. I think that if you are open and openly communicating that with the person that you're with at the time, I think that whether it's good or bad, you have to give that person an option to be able to accept it or to walk mm-hmm. away from it. Because if not, you're just going to be wasting each other's time. I can smoke I a bag love of that. that. Yeah, man, good Amen. looking, D-Nice. We Amen. appreciate the call. We got to rattle through these because we got a lot of people Amen. on the line. I'm telling you right now, if you don't love respond that. in the first two seconds, I got to go because the phone lines are jammed and people want to get in on this. Come on, y'all. Don't play with us now. I'm about to go to my hometown. 
where I was raised, Pasadena. Get on down. Dina Love. Dina Cripps. Yeah. Oh, damn. Shit, that's PDL. What's going on? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ricardo from Pasadena. What's up, man? Hey, Zo, man, I had to salute you, man. I've been checking y'all for years, brother. And uh, like I said, this is Ricardo, man. You know, Pasadena is the hometown, man, and you represent it. Lovely, brother. I, I salute you and I thank you. Uh, VC, Irana, like everything you guys are doing is right on point. And, and this particular uh, topic is it, like, man, after the last few callers, like, where do I even begin? Like, where do I even fit in with this? You know what I mean? Because you guys have touched and hit on so many different angles that are just, like, critical, you know. And so, uh, like I said, brother, I don't even know where to begin, but I had to salute you. And so one of the things that I learned, and a brother had mentioned it earlier, was the importance of, of just being honest with yourself. And, you know, like it hit me, you know, we all had those mistakes, but one of the things where I was not honest with myself was I, I put myself in a situation uh, with a young woman, and we wound up getting married. But this particular woman, I knew had I not been in a particular situation at that time, I probably wouldn't even ask her to be my woman. Mm. You know, but it's like she put it on me like, well, nigga, if you sorry, you know, put a ring on it. You know, I'm like, okay, you know, whatever, whatever. You know, it's like, so I wasn't honest with myself. And it was like after that, you know, I never needless to say the marriage didn't work out or whatever. But it's like by me not being honest or real with myself, you know, it's like I had to suffer the consequences. And you know how that goes with divorce and everything else. But uh, to make a long story short, it was, it's like years ago, you know, I hooked up with a sister and this was like. It's all the same age you are, man. We're in, we're in the same range. You know, it's like, you know my peoples, they know you, you know. Uh, but it's like, back, say, in my early 20s, you know, I met a woman, beautiful sister. I disrespected her by, by fooling around and not being real with her and, and still, you know, trying to bounce back between her and, say, my kid's mother or whatever the situation was. But that particular woman gave me a blueprint for what a virtuous woman is. Mm. And it's like, that's why that marriage that I that I was in, like I said, I compromised myself, but I knew it wasn't for me because I knew that there was something better. There was something greater. And so happy for me now, it's like, you know, I found that woman. I'm with that woman, you know, where she is my ride or die. She is my best friend, you know, and it's like tuning in to your show over the last couple of years, brother, you, Corey, and, and what your brothers do, like I said, it, it's it's revolutionary. Hey, man, I appreciate it, Ricardo. Thank Absolutely. you for reaching out, man. Dina Love in the Dina building. Rose that. City, you know what we do. Y'all better get all on day, down. Soldier. Appreciate Thank it, man. Thank you, man. I think we can all agree that when you're not honest with yourself, it's always going to result to wasted time. Not wasted because you're going to learn something, but you just waste more time and energy fooling yourself because you're not being real. That's most people, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what the representative is. Yeah. How many? Uh, I'm sorry. Just I, listening to his story, I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm like, and all of that time that you could have been spending with a person that was actually for you or doing what you really wanted to do, you weren't spending that because you weren't real. Hell, but listen, real hurts. Real hurts. But it's good for you. I'm saying, I was saying is, I'm going to... It's probably something Zoe's going to agree with, which is crazy because it's like it never happens. Muscle bottom. But <laughs> what I was going to say is, honestly, I feel like women are not as real as men. Men come with it. Like, here's a man. This is what it is. He's a man. And hey, girl, I like to cheat on you with other bitches. Like, dudes okay. are 100. This is for you. Okay. This is a gift for you. So, what? <laughs> oh my God. Thank you. But but real life, like I honestly can say this from experience. When I was younger, I played the role of wifey. Oh, dudes say they want a girl who does this, so I'm gonna do this. And I'm like, this is lame. I'm gonna just do me. And honestly, the quality of men that I have been introduced to now, as soon as I become one thousand percent the realionaires I was destined to become. Realionaires. Mm -hmm. LLC. Bow. Now the quality of men that I've got floating in is insane. So ladies, just be one 
thousand with yourself. I love it. Because he, he ain't gonna take you. If, I'm sorry. If you don't like yourself, who is? Why the hell should he? Right. Let me just do this. Our next caller. He's coming from Miami. Oh yes. And you know we got to set this brother up right because every time he calls him. He takes off from the free throw line with a blindfold on, and he does a 360 between the legs, laying down sideways, windmill. Mm -hmm. That's how hard he dunks. We got to give him his love. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the big homie Hustle. Where that record at? You better get on down. Yo, yo, yo. Let's set him up. Come on. Chargers. Menthol. Hall, lozenges, iPhones from 2004, <laughs> Red Bulls, headphones, White Sox caps, Dodger caps, rotary phones, flat screens, big computers. <laughs> I ran out of stuff. <laughs> Hustle in the building. What a pimp. <laughs> What up, what up, Zoe? What's what up happening, man? Beautiful ladies in the studio and on the phone line. What it is, Hustle? Hello. So, man, I done had notes on this since Monday, bro. So, I'm going to just run through it real quick. First one is embrace each day. Don't let it pass by without doing one thing specifically for them. Because, you know, I think we have a habit of becoming complacent, and that could be a big problem over time. It kind of erodes relationship mm. the second one be willing to try new things since you're building a new thing with that person it only makes sense to be creative with it. you know what I mean wow try new things. you better be a potter and, <laughs> potter the potter's house yeah. get ready get ready get ready get ready I'm sorry, I'm sorry. hey man For you, you got some good lessons if you listen to them you better get on down hustle. hey man I love it man this is crazy the third Hustle. one is, uh, y'all touched on this a lot tonight, is to pay attention. Basically, your partner will show you everything you need to know. And just like there's a difference between hearing and listening, there's a difference between looking and learning. Mm. Mm. So, that's yeah. the thing, man. That's my three. Man, I appreciate you, Hustle. Like I said, you was going to knock it out the park. He you always do. Sammy Brosa. We appreciate it. She, <laughs> look, look at, look, 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 look at over here. Oh, damn. Tyree over here breaking up shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, she treat this studio like it's a rental car. Mm-hmm. Driving over curbs to, and shit. To bring it Potholes to racing through. She don't care. I know. It's fine. <laughs> she don't own it. Hmm. Neither do I, for that matter. It's all good. Hey, guess who's on the line? Who, daddy? Yo. Y'all already know. I already Who? know. I already know. Y'all already <laughs> know. There's Every a- time this brother calls. Ooh. Get your book. Get your pen ready. Get, you- this I'm going to say. Nope. Listen, I, I put, she said his name wrong. No, no, no. no. I'm gonna say this. No, I told him. I told him for the old, He's he said uh, his no, name is no, gonna no, be. This, this I'm gonna say. This, this ain't, ain't, ain't I'm gonna say. No. I wish. I wish I'm gonna say this would call in. Oh, okay. I this. know he's listening. I'm gonna say this. Get on the phone line. Three two three two three zero forty four forty five. That's the number to dial if you want to participate. We got time. I'm doing callers. I ain't tripping. We might not even take another break. Mm, Come mean, on now. Three two three. Because you know this is gonna be two three zero. Red hot. 4445. Rogue. Red red hot fire. Let's get Zoe's this. gone rogue. The homeboy red from Missouri. Ooh. The goddamn show me oh. state. Line one. Get up in here, Red. Yes, hey, sir. Red. What's going on, ladies? What's going on, Zoe? What's happening, Pimp? Oh, you got it. You got it. Word, word. Um, <laughs> um I think be unconditionally c- compassionate mm. is one the one thing that I learned. Um, a lot of times people are in relationships too long when they're in microwave relationships when they're trying to bake a cake. Wow. That's not it's not meant for you. My thing is when, when it's done, it's done. You're, that's not being, you're not being, you're actually being cruel to the other person by sticking around. <laughs> you say more. I love it. Well, my thing is the longer you stick around, what what tends to happen is people tend to start lying. So not only that, they're not living their truth. The truth is not for you. It's for everyone else in your presence. Because they'll, they'll burn up. They'll burn up in the flame of the, of the truth. They can't handle it. So 
once you realize that, the longer you stick around, it's like um, you, you know, somebody hits a dog in the street. Do you shoot it in the head or do you just let it sit there and suffer? Wow. So the longer you're in a relationship and you're hanging around, when you know that it's already over, you are you are being very cruel to that particular person. Let them go. Mm-hmm. Ooh, wow. Let them go. It's not it's not meant to stick around, hang around, and then talk about wedding plans when, in fact, you already know six months ago that you should have been done. Mm. Damn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's you know, real? Listen, women are really good at that. Women are really good but, at breaking up with a motherfucker a year prior yeah. to her telling them. Ooh. <laughs> and stop apologizing for your truth. People have a tendency when they speaking from their feelings and how they feel, they end up apologizing for it. People do it all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said that. I'm sorry. I did that. Don't apologize. That's what you felt. Yeah. That's something that's real. That's, that's people do every people do it every day. Mm-hmm. Every day. Stop doing that. That's not what it's for. That's great. Yeah. That's, that's all I got to say. Wow. That's, that's all I got to say. Red Love in y'all. the building. Appreciate you, brother. Man, you know, it's a, that's cool. you know when I hear you know, thank you, Red. When I hear, thank you, Love listen, you, thank you. First Red. off, that I don't, even, so first sweet. Off, I don't even like your tone right now. Veronica. I like both of y'all for that. I don't even be oh, hearing Lord. this tone. You, you, every time Red called, Veronica's tone is different. Thank you, Red. Like, wait a minute. Who Shit. this is? Who, what am I, chopped liver? What the <laughs> fuck? Yeah, what up, Zo? <laughs> Get out here, Zo. Like, Zo, what, uh, ex- what are we talking about, Zo? <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> where's the topic? <laughs> right. Um, there, there are some, there are some masculine voices that soften a woman. Dude, Dude. I feel that though. very true. There's a couple that'll call, and I'm like, oh. my ex husband had the best phone, uh, phone and, voice and alive. Not you don't have that voice. <laughs> no, it's cool. It's truth, cool. Don't though. back, tra- just, don't, don't backtrack that, now. You, know, you have that truth. There's some <laughs> masculine voices. That I learned one women. of the things I learned in my last relationship is that I get butt hurt. But hurt. <laughs> now I'm butt hurt. <laughs> hey, red voice did sound like a little smooth velvet. Smooth between your toes. velvet. Purple you know velvet. What? Between what? your toes. I, him, I told him the, his voice is a penny dropper. Oh, yeah. snap. To Look, we might have to get him slide into the DM. You right. see about the slide in them DMs, red watch and now. So listen. Yes. We, we still got callers. The phone lines are open. We're not going to do a break. We're going to take this all the way to final summation. Let's do it. Why not? Let's go. The number to dial is what, ladies? 323-230-4445. Whitney? They, what, what she said. They want to hear your <laughs> voice, too. I could. This is, uh... <laughs> oh, shit. You better quit playing and Come get on, it. Man, that sexy wit. Wit sex. Um, y'all don't deserve wit this. Wit sex? Like wet sex? 323 How many fours? Four or five, something four, like four, that. Four, four, five. Figure okay. it out. Hey, Joseph, I need you to Wait stop with the queef fart oh. noise. Joseph okay. is funny. Christians to me. queef too. Ooh. It's not that they don't. Now, uh, Tyree, can three, we get a Christian three, queef? Three, two, three, two, three, oh, four, 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 five. Christian what? A Christian queef? Where am I, please? Somebody. I mean, we religious when we're fucking. It's not even that. You just sound like oh my god, Jesus, this is... Jesus been fucking. Jesus made me. <laughs> I'm Hold just on. saying. He Jesus. was there when I got down. He was there when my parents got down and made this awesomeness of which I am today. Hold on. Jesus had nothing to do with that. He had everything <laughs> to do with it. Listen, the big homie from ATL on line four is in the building. He responded to my call to action. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado. I'ma say this. Yes. This I'ma I'm say this. Say. What up, man? Oh, I just said that. Hey, what's what's going on, man? I wasn't gonna call in till you said something. And I, I appreciate the invite. <laughs> <laughs> Word up. What's, yeah, what's happening then? Um, hi, ladies. What's the- see Arona, Tyree, and Miss Tabor, Team Tabor. Yeah. My big homie Zothusala. Zothusala. Nine hundred and sixty-two live living ass. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I, I I don't have three hours listening in. I was just just welcoming to hear everybody else's responses. But you know, I was so much of a a truth seeker and liver, like Veronica said. I was living in my truth and just slinging my Peter. I had a very social organ, man. But but the one relationship, significant other, you know, the lesson that I learned from that one was I won't ever, 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 ever totally expose my inner self for my true self and my 
vulnerable self because I felt like I loved that individual so much, so I shared me so much, so much of me with her. She did not motherfucking deserve it mm. wow. at all. Okay. okay. Yeah. And I've learned that. And so I'm not bitter about it, but it taught me if you if you if 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 you if you present yourself as a Bentley but you're really a fucking mm. you go when it comes mm. to accepting and embracing somebody's total truth that they're giving you and you pretty much shit on it because mm. you're incapable of doing the same mm. I won't ever, 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 ever do it again. Wow. That's the lesson I learned. That's interesting. Hey, brother, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for calling in, man. All right. I just go back to earlier what uh, I think. VC. Get on down, VC. You can always say one thing. Yeah. B- make sure it's one um, thing, though. So here's the thing about that. And I, and I, I deeply appreciate being wounded. Right. And there, there has to come a point where you have to go back in and reconcile yourself to... Um, yourself and so that you can fall in love with yourself again because mm. I promise you that when you fall in love with yourself again you have nothing to protect or defend or to justify like, like there's a state that exists and I, and I hope that our brothers can finally arrive at that because we've been in so much subjugation around protecting defending and justifying ourselves and so we've done it in love, we've done it, we've done it interpersonally, we've done it internally. If we could just get to a state where we aren't in that justifying, protecting, defending ourselves mm. anymore, then we could actually fall in love with ourselves. And by definition, when you fall in love with yourself, the planet falls in love with you. Mm. That's, how, that's how energy works. That's how the game works. Mm -hmm. But we've lost sight of that because we're so busy defending and calcifying ourselves against from the next hurt. And I understand why. We've been bruised and wounded so deeply. But I'm here to tell you right now that it is possible. (laughs) That's all. Well, you know, it, you could have saved that for our summation. I was like, that was the first. That was a great but summation. That's fine. That's my summation. No, that's my summation. <laughs> that's so we're just going to replay the tape back. We're right going to replay point. the tape on your part. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I was feeling it. We got another caller on line three Chicago. Yeah, Chi Town. Chi Town in the building. You better get on down. we always in the building. Chi Town, okay? what's happening? But then he don't pick up, though. Just some shot town shit. We just <laughs> we just represented to the fullest. Shot town, what's happening? Cricket, cricket. Wait, let's let's give him a chance. Let's he he might be running. It was ninety three. Was it ninety three? Oh, you know what? Not if he live uh, from my neighborhood. Hey, shot town. You in the building? Yes or no? And scene. And scene. <laughs> All right. It is a wrap. Mm-hmm. So we're coming to the end of the show, and I want to get some summations in here. I want to get some ideas about this whole thing that we talked about. Because I have my ideas set up, but I want to hear from you guys. And I'm going to start with Tyree. I'm going to go with Arana, Veronica, and then we're going to end today with Whitney. Dub T. 30 seconds or less. Get at me. Bam. Um, Tyree. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us what you learned, baby. Um, I just learned, you know, every relationship. <laughs> I can't creepy zone. But even the worst relationships, you know, you can learn the best lessons from. Wow. All right. Short and sweet. I like that. Slap it. <laughs> what? I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Arana. I think I kind of said it earlier, but <sighs> guys, I'm just going to repeat myself in this voice and say it. Be honest with yourself and save yourself a lot of time. When we're not honest, we waste a lot of time not loving ourselves and not being with the ones who love us. Arana Lopez out. (laughs) Veronica Conway, give us another summation. I'm sure you have one. We are in soul school. And so, black man, find a way to 
fall in love with the black woman, black woman, find a way to throw down your armor and fall in love with the essence of the black man because he is actually the true alpha on the planet. So if you could find a way to surrender to him, and a black man, you could find a way to protect her, truly, then game over. This is it's not just a love revolution, it's a political revolution. And so I invite us all to reconsider our ideas of one another and be about black love, no matter what. It's a real thing. One of my favorite, I always say this guy's name. You guys should really go look this dude up. Krishna. J. Krishnamurti. Wow. He has a great book uh, called The Mirror of Relationship. Mm. And you should read it. And the reason why you should read it is because it's, it's very succinct. Right? It was a trick question to begin with. The whole topic. You know finding three things you learned from your most significant ex. Listen, the whole process of relationship is like being enrolled in a university. I call it the university of you. Neurolinguistic programming teaches us that if you're having a problem communicating with someone, it's not their fault, it's your fault because you lack rapport. You can't have rapport unless you drop all filters by which you look at a person through. If it's the filter of conservatism, liberalism, uh, bougetto, whatever your filter is, if you're looking at someone through a filter, you are not actually seeing them for who and what they are. Mm -hmm. Relationship is the university of you. You get something, it's because you are that thing and you haven't reconciled that thing within your being. That's the purpose of experiencing a person you come to later label as, oh, that person was bad or that person was negative or that person was a mess and I don't even know why I stayed that long. There's a reason you're there. There's a reason they're there. There's a reason you guys came together and interfaced and you were supposed to exchange something that's much more meaningful than where y'all going to be in the next five years. <laughs> right? How many people you know have moved on, but not really? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they've moved they all on. Come back. They think they've done something. They think they've gone somewhere. But when you get them in front of a clinician or a psychiatrist, or a therapist, and that person peels back the layers of the mask they wore that makes them look like they're good, like they've moved on. When you get past that mask, you go, God damn, you still hurting from that last situation. And just like an old fucked up shoe you twisted your ankle in, if you don't throw that shoe away, if you keep wearing that shoe, you want, you're bound to twist your ankle again because the first sprain molded the shoe into the form of the sprain. <laughs> you better not play in them shoes no more. You better not play in the relationship game with the same sprained mind or the same sprained heart. I'm just saying, if you don't want to relive some shit. Voice of reason, man, is crazy. This is what we do. We don't have all the answers, but we do have the ability to spark the conversation. And if you don't continue it, then you wasted your time listening to us for two hours. You feel me? You better have devotion. Like my mom used to say, let's have devotion. My mama was beautiful. She said, come on, let's go downstairs and have devotion. Now, everybody, I want you to pick a Bible verse, read your favorite verse. And then after that, we're going to pray. And then we eat and go to sleep. We have devotion. Sometimes we need some spiritual devotion, some relationship devotion. We need that if we're going to heal some shit. I'm Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. And Friday is going to be crazy. I think I'm going to bring Troop back in here. Yay! We're going to bring the, the R&B group Troop back in here. We're going to play some R&B music. We're going to play some love music. We're going to baby making music. That might be the topic. I don't know. I'm going to grind the whole show. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. <laughs> I appreciate everybody for tuning in. I'm Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. Don't forget to get my app on Android and iPhone. Get at me, support the movement, and we out.
Deuces.